Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. I'm John Cook, and I'm joined today by Takehiro Sakito, Chief Japan Strategist for MUFG. It's Monday, December 19th, 2022. Welcome back to the podcast, Sakito-san. Good to be back. And always good to have you. Let's get right into it. Um, you know, as you know, the Bank of Japan released the quarterly Tonkin survey last week. Uh, we didn't get a chance to speak about it. So why don't you take our listeners through the key points, takeaways, you know, specifically as it pertains to yen rate and basis. The BOJ's December Tonkin survey released on December 14th shows that Japanese companies have been uh, altering their investment activity in 2022 because of changes in uh, trade terms as uh, the yen has weakened. Specifically, the business sentiment amongst Japanese manufacturers worsened slightly down minus one point amongst large manufacturers for the current business DI, while sentiment among non-manufacturers improved by five points. Amongst ma- manufacturers, Business sentiment DIs buried dropped by five points for the material sectors, but improving by two points for processing manufacturers. The decline in employment condition DI appears to be consistent with the labor shortage. Japanese companies across all sectors expected overseas sales to rise 12.8% year over year up 8.6% year over year in September and fiscal year 22, with a rate of growth accelerating. Japanese companies project domestic sales to rise 13.2% year over year, falling investment to increase 17.8% year over year, and domestic investment to rise 19.7% year over year. Domestic sales and listing were increasingly expected to pick up. Japanese companies are still determining their stances in regards to returning to domestic activities. They have already expanded abroad and they will still face issues with maintaining and reshuffling their global business portfolios, even if they rebuild their domestic businesses. Okay, um, let's uh, let's continue on this line of thought. Um, so I, I think the follow up question is clearly: What are the implications of this? Uh, you know, particularly for Japanese companies or both Japanese companies and Japanese investors. Okay, yeah, has started to strengthen again uh, after weakening in two thousand twenty two, and the Japanese companies. Uh, have been enjoying the falling currency valuation gains for their direct investing portfolios, struggling with rising material costs, amid accelerating global inflation, and reviewing their global businesses. Japanese business portfolios are increasingly considered cheap, and the Tankan, December Tankan seems to show that the Japanese manufacturers in particular may be considering returning to Japan. We will be watching any changes in how the Japanese camp corporate sector changes surplus funds in its G10 business portfolios, aiming is a wide yen basis. That means increasing the G10 asset funding costs, not only for dollar yen, but also for Euro yen and a pound yen. Japanese companies have been reconsidering their business portfolios in uh, view of their positions with key currencies like dollar, euro, pound, and Aussie dollar. They had uh, probably had to make some bold changes in their original financial strategies as. Major currencies funding costs have changed drastically since the start of the 2022. Over the near term, uh, investors should be watching what G10 bond Japanese investors buy next. They are flush with funds, so they could start to reduce their positions, especially dollar and euro. They could have some new investment options as well. 
We expect preference for JGBs among the foreigners will inevitably grow. In 2022, JGBs performed remarkably for managing short-term G10 surplus funds. We expect appetite for G JGBs to grow even more aimed to investors. If uh, feeling G10 rate risk in a 2023, it is a deep rooted inflation pressures around the world. Yeah, that JGBs are a great place to great place to hide. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so uh, for, for yeah. sure uh, up to this point, um, you also make the point that the the widening basis, so the increased cost of of funding and hedging, uh, you know, foreign assets, was something that Japanese companies and investors, you know, really really struggled with uh, with this year. Um, so, so switching topics, uh, you know. Uh, decently um you know we also recently received the october uh treasury international capital data uh which is always super insightful uh you know it gives a great uh <laughs> a great view as to what uh foreign investors are doing in u.s markets breaking down broken down over asset classes although i think we could all agree it'd be nice if it was released with less of a lag but why don't you take us through the key points um as it pertains to japanese investor uh activity in u.s bond markets thank you and the U.S. Department of the Treasury International Capital U.S. Tick data for October released on December 15th shows that the Japanese net sold U.S. Treasuries by $14 billion, but net bought U.S. government agency bonds by $5 billion, U.S. stocks by $3 billion, and U.S. corporate bonds by $474 million. Japanese investors have continued to unload U.S. Treasuries even in a into the second half. Japanese investors continue to unload U.S. Treasuries in October as they net bought more U.S. government agency bonds and acquires U.S. corporate bonds, focusing more on the U.S. dollar yield. Japanese investors shifting, shifted from U.S. Treasuries to U.S. government agency MBS and our U.S. corporate bonds in October, they have uh, reacting to rise yen basis costs by reshuffling into higher dollar yield assets. Over the near term, we expect appetite for credit assets to improve amongst Japanese investors as yen hedging costs rise against not only dollar but also euro, pound, Aussie. But dollar yen basis has started to tighten and uh, Dian basis could be a driver whether Japanese investors restore their U.S. Treasuries positions. Yeah, so this increased basis cost really a theme here, um, and I think you maybe mentioned the point, uh, you know, the point um, uh, before. But Japanese investors definitely have dry powder. The question is whether they use them, and I guess as you point out, where they use them, a tighter basis could encourage them to restore uh, U.S. Treasury positions. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, great. Well, let's let's uh, let's let's tie it all up in a nice little bow, uh, given it's the holiday season. Uh, what's your outlook for yen rate, spot dollar yen, and yen basis markets? Our weekend, in reaction to the November CPI data, aims of market speculations that inflation could slow. Dollar rallies as a me uh, medium figure in a FOMC's policy rate dot chart was raised at its December meeting. While Chair uh, Jerome Powell seemingly toned down his hawkishness at a post-meeting press conference, which weighed on Dalian. Over the near term, U.S. economic data could weaken, and um, Dalian upside, topside will likely be limited. Media reports that the BOJ's new leadership will examine monetary easing policy caused Dalian to decline uh, this week. The BOJ meets uh, December uh, 19th to 20th and uh, could trigger a drop in a dollar yen. I wanted to make sure that uh, some media reported that uh, the Japanese government is planning to on um, planning on revising its uh, accord with the BOJ that has underpinned the BOJ's bold monetary easing since 2013 and I continue to make the BOJ an outlier amongst major central banks. My take is uh, uh, this as to the body of the evidence 
that the BOJ is likely to change policy next year. The new BOJ governor starts term in April. So realistically, this happens mid next year. We expect the BOJ to end COVID countermeasure operations partly while the keeping the monetary operation the same at its December meeting. Over the near term, we now see a bearish bias for dying and rather than neutral with a trading range between 134 to 137. The long end of the yen swap rate curve has declined, while, uh, however, slightly. The fiscal year 23 government budget and the JGP issuance plans will be the key focus after the BOJ meeting. The government is considering raising taxes and issuing more bonds to cover expanded defense spending. And this could put pressure, stress on the JGB yield curve. We maintain uh, our view for the neutral bias for yen rates. The yen basis curve is tightened, especially the front end. The Ministry of Finance uh, weekly data showed that the Japanese investors unloaded a net 490 billion yen of foreign securities in the week of December 4th to 10th, while they acquired a net 246 billion yen of foreign stocks and investment bond holdings, then unloaded a net 605 billion yen of medium to mountain foreign bonds, and a net 131 billion yen of short term foreign bonds. Over the same week, foreigners bought a net 7.2 trillion yen of Japanese securities, including a net 5.2 trillion yen of short term yen bonds, 1.1 trillion yen of Japan stocks and investment fund holdings, and 845 billion yen of medium to long term yen bonds. Overseas investors are rebuilding their short, medium, and long-term JGVs and Japan stock holdings. Looking ahead, we expect and uh, we think that foreigners are likely to return more JGVs. On the other hand, we expect the Japanese investors to be careful when rebuilding their foreign bond holdings. We expect the yen basis to return to tightening bias from a uh, tightening bias from a neutral bias. Okay, so there's a lot there. Um, let's see if I can summarize here. Uh, and, and you know, mm -hmm. as an as an administrative note, we are recording uh, this episode the morning of the twentieth, uh, you know, Tokyo time. Uh, so mm -hmm. the the BOJ uh, mm -hmm. the BOJ meeting and and post meeting press conference will have concluded at the time that our listeners listen to the podcast. So unfortunately, we cannot predict the future, but <laughs> we do believe that the December meeting will be another non-event. Uh, these these media reports that the BOJ may change policy are significant, but this change is going to take time. The new governor won't mm -hmm. take take mm -hmm. uh won't won't take office until you know early April. Um, you know, presumably there might be a policy review. You know, so you're sort of talking the end or sorry middle of you know 2023. Uh, you you know, just using sort of, you know, rough, rough numbers. Um, and again, on dollar yen, you are bearish, which makes sense with, you know, what I what I just said there. In contrast, you're neutral on JGBs, although, you know, presumably in uh, in some future state, the uh, the 10 year part of the curve has uh, has room to sell off pretty significantly. And then tighter on dollar yen basis, uh, you make the point that foreigners are likely to return to the JGB market, while Japanese investors are, are going to be more are likely to be more cautious, you know, that obviously is a is a tighter basis. So Great stuff as always. Uh, thank you for taking us through it, Sakita san Thanks for having me and uh, arranging this podcast always, John. Of course. And thank you for listening to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And reach out to your MUFG sales rep for any further information. Check back soon for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.